When you think about children reading and writing, you probably think in terms of letter recognition and decoding, word comprehension, and maybe the fine motor skills required to handle a pencil. It's probably less likely that directionality and spatial awareness come to mind. But when we think about it, we realize that our writing occurs from top to bottom and from left to right. That the straight and curvy lines that make up letters must be written in a certain direction to be understood. That in fact, the direction in which a letter faces can be what distinguishes it from another letter. Take a lowercase b and a lowercase d, for example. The only difference between them is the direction in which the curvy line faces and many a child has arrived in third grade still unable to differentiate between the two. But when a child has lots of experience with directionality and spatial awareness with her or his body, that can translate onto the page. There's just something about imprinting information on the body. Once it's there, it also imprints in the mind. So in this video, we'll take a look at activities that involve moving from top to bottom and from left to right. But we'll also explore activities that involve crossing the vertical midline of the body, that invisible line running down the center of the body from head to toe. Neurophysiologist Carla Hannaford, author of Smart Moves, Why Learning is Not All in Your Head, tells us that reading demands cross-lateral eye-hand coordination also, cross-lateral patterns require the left and right hemispheres of the brain to communicate across the corpus callosum. In fact, a friend and colleague, Dr. Marjorie Corso, discovered that many children who are unable to cross the midline read or write down the vertical center of the page, or sometimes writing halfway across the page, then turning it over and starting again. So let's get started with the activities. To imprint the feeling of top to bottom on the children, invite them to move the following from up high to down low. One and then the other hand. Both hands together. The nose. A shoulder. Their belly button. Usually their favorite. Their whole body. Pop up and do it again. When the children are ready for a greater challenge, you can combine top to bottom spatial orientation with word comprehension by asking them to show you the differences among these words by moving from high to low positions. Shrink, melt, collapse, shrivel. The more comfortable children are with moving their bodies in a downward direction, the more comfortable they will be moving their eyes in that direction. The Grand Old Duke of York is an oldie that offers both experience with rhythm and reinforcement of the concepts of up and down. You can sing the song if you know the melody, or you can use it simply as a poem. Review it first with the children and then repeat it slowly as the children act it out. The grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up the hill, he marched them down again. And when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. And when you're halfway in between, you're neither up nor down. Good old head, shoulders, knees, and toes is also great for getting children comfortable with moving from top to bottom. To give them an opportunity to practice left to right movements, have the children stand side by side in lines facing the same direction. Then designate objects or places in the room to indicate their left and right sides. For example, the windows are on their left side and the door is on the right. Moving always from left to right, for example, from the window to the door, invite the children to perform the following activities and any others you can think of, demonstrating it first if necessary. Turn their heads, draw a line on the floor with their big toe, move both arms. You can do this at various levels of space, at shoulder height, above the head, and below the waist. Move one arm at a time. You can do that also at various levels of space. Take several steps to the side, jump, hop, or slide. Another possibility is to challenge the children to perform group activities that involve moving left to right. For example, they might hold hands and circle to the right, or they might do the wave moving from left to right. To provide additional experience with the spatial directions of up, down, left, and right, Create or find a large card with a big arrow drawn on it. Display the card with the arrow pointed in one of four directions. 
If it's pointed upward, the, tr the children stretch toward the ceiling. If it's pointed downward, the children crouch down. If it's pointed left or right, the children take a step in that direction. For cross-lateral experience, you can play a game of cross-lateral creatures. Your children may feel too mature to practice crawling on their tummies and creeping on their hands and knees, but they'll still find it fun to pretend to be a variety of critters. Invite them to move like the following. Dogs, snakes, spiders, eels, cats, seals, and turtles. You can also play a mirror game with them in which all of the activities involve crossing the midline. Stand facing the children and ask them to imitate your movements, then do actions such as the following. Pat the left shoulder with the right hand and vice versa. Reach with one arm across the body. Cross and then uncross one ankle over the other ankle. Place the left hand on the right arm and vice versa. Touch your left hip with your right hand and vice versa. Give yourself a hug. And there you have it, the best beginnings for learning to read and write, which, by the way, will occur on a child's own timetable, and every child has his or her own. For example, neurophysiologist Carla Hannaford, she didn't read till she was 10, and she did okay in life. I hope you'll subscribe to this series of videos and that you'll leave your own ideas in the comments section. Thanks for joining me.